Oh, shit, it's really We did it. All right, ready? Three, Three two, two, one, go. go. Oh. Excuse me, Mr. Kringle, sir. We know you're probably real busy tonight, but we thought we'd give you these. You know, to keep your strength up for the long journey. Oh, you kids. Santa's got something very special for you. What if this happened to you? Would you have been able to protect your family from Santa's relentless flurry of edge-based attacks? Worry not, though. Those kids were on the bad list. But what if they weren't? That's exactly why you need this. Surviving Edged Weapons, the best police training film ever made. Never again succumb to the evil of any pointy object, no matter how long, sharp, or delicious. Today we're going to take a look at something called Surviving Edged Weapons, which was a film issued to the Canadian Police Force in 1988 with the intent of training said police force how to survive and deal with what they refer to as edge-based attacks. We talking like edge of a table? Microsoft browser? Well, none of those actually. Uh, what they mean when they say edge-based attacks is primarily blades, uh, with often comical and novel examples. So yeah, this was meant to be an actual documentary for police on how to best avoid and deflect situations involving knives, katanas, chainsaws, you name it, okay? Basically anything pointy. Pencils. You gotta see this one to believe it. So let's watch. From the beginning, man has possessed the attributes of the animal. And from his human inventiveness came weapons that could puncture and slash his enemy's flesh. Did we really have to go back to the fossil record to determine the origin of the shiv? We're going back down the family tree to Homo erectus to find out why man's got an unquenchable thirst for thrusting. He developed the instinct, speed, power, dynamic movement. And to illustrate this raw primal vigor, we found the fattest, most mentally incapacitated looking caveman we could possibly find. Gradually, which has changed very little, man created a knife culture. A knife culture. Can someone please explain to me what exactly constitutes as knife culture? Knife culture. Still slashing and stabbing its enemies, the knife culture is still alive and deadly. Right here, wouldn't you know it? At home. In the Bronx. What's happening, man? Now that's it. Got the money, man? Let me see the shit, man. The shit's there, man. Where's the money? Five minutes. Five minutes, baby. No, oh, man. No money, no shit. Shit was there if you wanted it. But unfortunately, no money, no shit. Shit was there. Ah, oh, man. Five minutes. Oh, fuck you, man. Hold on, you lost me. Can you explain the rules again? While the knife culture continues to hone its skills, many officers dismiss the edged weapon as a mere relic from man's primitive roots. No, they don't. No one takes a look at this and goes, Oh, very fine specimen. Is it, is it from the Neolithic? What museum does it belong to? Hey, you. Pig. I wouldn't finish writing that ticket if I were you. <laughs> okay, wow. Real scary, Fred Flintstone. What are you gonna do next with that thing? You gonna jump in this car, hop in this car, paddle it with your feet like Wilma and Barney? <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Fucking loser! Knew I should have brought a gun. <laughs> Use of the unexpected is a favorite tactic of edged weapon offenders. I told you three times to stop by on the customers. This time you're going to jail. You're too close. Ah, oh, God damn it. I need a new job. Oh. Ah, shit! Basic perception if you get into a knife attack is there's gonna be one single thrust, you're gonna cleanly and effectively block it, and that's gonna be the end of it. You're gonna... The basic perception is I, I'm, I'm, I'm James Phillips, okay? I read this a rough and tumble world. You think it's gonna go this way, it's gonna go that way, okay? Knives is complicated business. You're gonna bend that knife out of his hand and arrest the bad guy, and that's the end. It doesn't work that way, sports fans. You hear that, sports fans? You're lagging behind. You're making resident knife expert James Phillips have to repeat himself. Get your shit together. 
fucking sports fans. Things go from bad to horrible real quick. Right away, you're in deep shit. You're in bad shape. You're in a bad place. You're in what I'd call it not good, in a lower than ideal, not where you'd want to be situation. Our goal is to help you avoid becoming an edged weapon statistic by teaching you how to make a proper threat assessment and how to react with control. Now what we really want to instill in you is not just how to spot an edged weapon, but also what to look for and what to do about it. Okay, in fact, just behind me right now, it's a great example. We don't know what that could be. You could just see the hilt of his sword poking out there. Could be his Vihander, a katana. Jumping Jehovah James, that's a scimitar he's got. Very formidable sword. Don't want to tangle with that thing. Designed to kill when making contact with the body. Now remember, the first thing you got to do in this scenario is stay calm. If you don't get him on the first shot, you've always got four more. Hey, I got him in one, but don't feel bad if you don't, okay? Take as many tries as you need. See, what I want you to really internalize is that this method is nearly 100% effective, because even if he does manage to get in close, okay, he's really not gonna wanna get hit with those slugs, okay? He's gonna avoid it, as you can see, at all costs, because it's gonna hurt and burn his internal organs. Edged weapon attacks often occur in unlikely situations. Police department, come on to the door. Now, hold on, does this man just casually have a claymore sitting in the corner of his house? I have nothing left to lose in this world. My wife abandoned me, my children hate me. Now this cop is knocking at my door and I have King Arthur's literal fucking Excalibur right next to me. Ah! No, that did not just happen. Ah! How did they make this with a straight face and then show it to an academy of police officers as official training protocol? Adding to the threat are a host of improvised weapons. A baseball cap with razor blades sewn to the back, which can be swung by the bill to cut your face. This guy's a legend, all right? He's a regular Mexican odd job. Naranjas by day, your cabeza by night. Here's trabajo extraño. Common household items can produce extreme damage. An attack with this grapefruit cutter would be like getting stabbed with two knives. This improperly stored Swiss Army knife could be like getting stabbed with three. There's no way to know for sure, but these four regular knives taped together would likely cause a sensation of four knives stabbing at once. There's simply no telling how far this rabbit hole goes. Switchblades and gravity blades can be drawn and used instantly. Is the speed with which attacks can occur. Buck knives can be locked in place when drawn, even with one hand. Please! Uh, sir, have mercy on me! Watch how fast someone who's really skilled can get into action with a knife. Wait, what? Huh? Were there any frames between when he was standing and when the knife came out? I didn't see it, dude. Go back. Go back. I didn't see it. There's no frames, dude. That's just, he's been holding the knife the entire time. Go to a baby picture of him. Dude, he's had that knife the whole time. He never took that out. Officers who fall victim to edged weapons usually commit at least one critical error, like misreading what could be a weapon. Let's try it again this time. Why don't you leave the pens in the tray before you come through? Sure. Sometimes it's the unlikely individual who has the best chance of harming you. Yeah. It sure is. Dude, you could have just put the pens in the tray. Let's be real, okay? Now you're going to jail for the rest of your life. Uh, was it fucking cool? Absolutely was fucking cool. Was it worth it? I'm not so sure. You were just on your way to see your grandma in Miami Beach. You didn't have to savagely murder that airport attendant. I'm not one to judge, but... A third type of behavior usually occurs as a defensive reaction by an offender. Get away from here! The taunting gesture. Drop the razor! No! What he's telling you is, don't invade my space or I'll attack you. Soon after this grandiose display, he will retreat back to his den to tend to his newborn cubs, once again secure in his domain. Whether you actually have to use deadly force will depend on the suspect's action. Holy shit. Hell, Satan! Lady? Lady, are you okay? Rick, she's got a knife. Drop the knife! God damn it, Rick, take cover! That knife is fully loaded! Drop the knife! Lady, I didn't want to do this! I told you to drop the darn knife! When you do have to use your firearm, remember this acronym, SMENS. Go on, take notes. You, you better not forget that. Smens, how could, how could you ever forget that? 
You shoot to stop the attacker's threatening action. Shoot, that's a good one. Remember that. Shoot first, men's later. <laughs> you move out of the attacker's path. Where are you moving to? You on the run now? Quick, get out of there before the police come. Oh, wait, I am the police. You're going to jail for a long time, son. You evaluate whether the attacker has been incapacitated. Yeah, I shot him. I, he's dead. You neutralize the continuing threat if it has not been stopped. Neutralize, okay, th th this one was already accomplished in step one, in step shoot, okay? Don't need this one, it's redundant. And finally, you scan the area for other threats. Uh, you're the threat in this particular situation. So unless you're scanning in the mirror, don't scan. Should really just be smear, if I'm being honest. You don't even really gotta evaluate, just sm Don't even gotta move, just, just shoot. Just remember to shoot the guy. That's really all it's gotta say. <laughs> How many edged weapons do you see now? I didn't expect to see you two again this year on account of the aortic ruptures. So tell me, this year have you been naughty or nice? Oh, oh, you little bastards! I'll show you the true meaning of Christmas! Remember, Smith, step, step one, one, shoot. Step two, move. Step three, evaluate. Step four, neutralize. Step five, scan. I just want to give a huge shout out to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. Many of you out there have been asking me for my shaving routine, so I thought I would share. You know, I may have a lot of sharp and shiny things laying around, but what do you think I use this? Why would you think that? I use the highest quality razors only, which is why I use Dollar Shave Club. And it's not just razors you can get from them. You know, it's shaving creams, lotions, deodorants, salves, you name it. They got everything to keep you feeling rugged and fresh throughout the day. I'm really talking everything, okay? They've even got, they got fresh and tingly peppermint one wipe Charlies. I'll let you use your imagination as to where the one wipe is going down. I know what I'm talking about, okay? I use Dollar Shave Club myself. I get a box from them every month. You can mix and match what you receive every month with their super intuitive graphic interface, and you can change the frequency with which you receive each item. It really beats going to the store every month. I just come straight to your doorstep, and you're ready to go. If you want to shave the JonTron way, go to dollarshaveclub.com slash JonTron to get the shave starter set for only $5 and check out all their great holiday gift sets. After that, the restock box ships full-size products at regular price. Merry Christmas.